Welcome back to Bixby Trip, and this is your host, Carter. Let's get into this. So, the last few days we've been doing some testing here on essentially the test bench. So, we got the normal test bench. This is a Gigabyte GAH111-D3A, and that's a 3930 Celeron, 8 gigs of memory, mining board, running simple mining OS on USB stick and we have the A5000 this is the RTX this is the Ampere card and we're running on a handful of different algorithms and tests so we're going to jump right into this no BS just numbers I know you guys like that let's jump to today's sponsor and then we'll get into this Today's sponsor is Wattam, a trusted equipment managed service provider in the Bitcoin mining space. Wattam offers a full line of equipment ranging from top ASIC miners to deployable custom mining containers and transformers. For small, medium, and large scale operation, Wattam does not just sell miners. It's a one-stop crypto mining solutions provider that offers a full on-site hosting plan, including set up an installation of your rigs at one of their hosting facilities. This is 24 seven monitoring, maintenance, diagnostics, and repair services all performed by their staff. With over three years of experience and more than 70 megawatts across eight mining facilities around the globe, including five facilities in the U.S., Wadham has the ability to meet and exceed all of your crypto mining needs. Wadham is a trusted and reliable partner that will accompany you on your crypto mining journey from start to finish. Head over to wadham.io forward slash Bitsby Trippin to learn more. What are we looking at here? So this is the A5000 running right now, running about 60C on the temp, 85% fan speed, core and memory where you have it set, and I will show you what it looks like in simple mining here. But this has been running Raven uh, for a couple days. So um, the adapter here that we have is a display port to HDMI, and it, it doesn't, one thing I'll tell you is like having this used as a display doesn't sit there and scroll like regular. It just kind of takes like, snapshots which is interesting and i've tried it on all the display ports here but bottom line if you're not using this as a display it doesn't really matter it doesn't affect you know the actual performance or anything but it is an interesting observation that it's not sitting there scrolling the minor log um, however you can see we've had a lot of good shares 1319 no uh, orphan shares or no rejects so this has been running for a while we're running on the card at 230 watts and its efficiency is about that right now. So we're at 45.63 mega hash on Ravencoin. And you know, of course we're mining Ravencoin right now. Uh, we have a handful of rigs pointed on Raven Solo to see if we can nail some 5,000 coin blocks before the halving that's in about 19 days from now. So we're seeing if we can win a couple blocks and get about 10,000 Raven before it gets halved and we're at 2,500 coins per block. So we are running the two miners solo right now on this card and a handful of other rigs. But I wanted to see how well it would perform. And I mean, it's not too bad. I mean, this card has a TDP of 230 watts. So unlike a typical 3080, which is as loosely uh, as powerful um, as this card, it it's using a lot less power. So it's using about 70 watts less than what a 3080 would do. A 3080 is right around anywhere from 290 to 305 watts to get those numbers around 45 mega hash. So let's get into the settings real quick and then we're gonna make a uh, change and we're gonna try a handful of other algorithms here. So you guys can see here, 1900 I have set on the core, 2400 in the memory, and 230 on the power. I start decreasing this and it, it's essentially, if I go to 220 on this, um, it, it, this will drop to about 42 mega hash. So it's very power dependent on its output and you can see the, you know, the scrolling here like normal. So it's been running roughly uh, two days and 18 hours running Raven. Now let's switch over and see how it does other algorithms real quick for you guys. All right, we've now switched it over to Ethereum and this thing is an absolute, absolute beast. So we're at 109 mega hash right now. And here's our settings. So 2200 on the core, 3700 on the memory with the 230 on the power limit. 
And the one thing I didn't show you guys on the previous with Ravencoin was the actual power draw on this unit. And you guys can see it here on the screen here, 209 mega hash. And we're at a full system of right at 293 watts. And what's that breakdown on for Ethereum here? And this was 280 on uh, Ravencoin. But here is what we're looking at. We're looking at a GPU 8 pin power draw of 153 watts. And then from the riser standpoint with our tool here, we can see that that's 41 there. So you're looking at right there at 190 watts, right? 154, 155 plus 40. So you're looking at about 195 watts on this card, even though it's set to 230. It's physically what we're trapping here is showing about 195 watts on the GPU with the remaining part of that, you know, being the rest of the pool from the motherboard and, um, you know, the whole, the whole setup here. So the full system wise, and you can still see it running here, 109.3. And, you know, you still see those settings and you see the 109 you know, 0.078 right now. It looks like it's where it's really landing at. Now I did try to take it to 3,800. It went up to 113 mega hash, but it was not stable. It ended up crashing after a little bit at 113 mega hash. So these things are the Ampere five, you know, A5000s are rated around the 3080, you know, when you talk about generational standpoint and the A6000s are around the 3090. So, um, you know, from our architecture standpoint, and we're on back order to get a, a A6000 because I want to do a test with you guys on what the A6000 can actually output uh, on the Ampere side. But that is the, the Ethereum. Let's go ahead and do a quick test. All right, now we're looking at Flux, which uses Equihash, and it looks like we're around 67.3. I've seen it as high as 71, but we had the settings a little higher than this. Uh, we went to 2600 uh, core memory and 3700. We went to 2450 core and 3700 memory, but it wasn't really stable. It got about 72 uh, on the soles, but uh, you know we're looking for a stable setting here. So it's very proportional again to the power limit on the watts if i bring that down any this goes down proportional so you know you really need to run it uh around that 230 if you're going to try to maintain max performance here um, but you know it's a little slower than a 3080 a 3080 gets about 74 with some proper settings and i think a lot of it has to do with the limitation on the power limit there so we see this thing running here and again, back on the, the GPU power and riser being the same, a little lower on the riser draw from 41 down to 37, and 154, 155 on the 12, or on the eight pin power like normal. So uh, Flux, you know, coming in at a decent rate, but I mean, I wouldn't be buying this GPU for Flux. All right, now we're looking at Ergo. And we are averaging right around 261.7. It peaked at a little over 62, almost 63 mega hash, but it looks like it's really evened out around 261.7, which is quite a bit more than a 3080. So this is definitely running around the 3090 speeds. 3090s are around 263. Uh, you know, the, the pricing for this card's around a 3090 anyways. So, uh, I mean, a little under a 3090, it's about $2,175 uh, for this card. But um, these are the settings we're running. 2400 core, 3650 on the memory, and 230 again on the power. Uh, using the same amount of juice, or mo most of the other algorithms that we've tested earlier. So let's go ahead and check... A couple more and then we'll wrap this uh, video up all right so now i wanted to test ethereum classic because some nvidia cards especially like the 1070s take a pretty big hit with doing ethereum with you know the larger dag file so i wanted to see if ethereum classic would move any different with running a little around the same rate that we had ethereum at 
on the memory side and it looks like it's about the same so it's running at about 109.1 uh to in total for ethereum classic so no much of a difference between ethereum and ethereum classic on you know f hash all right my dudes hopefully that was a good fun one for you it's always fun to do some testing we don't do enough of that i can't wait to get the rest of these cards in as we're splitting between these and the 4000s, the A4000s. And we'll do a test with the A4000 when I get one physically down here. And we'll, we'll do the same test. We'll see what the 4000s can do. And of course, I'm trying to source a 6000 just to bring these kind of numbers to you guys and let you know what's going on. So we're going to have a few more videos like this. BBT Ray is going to be doing some of these also with you guys as we start testing some other GPUs. Uh, related in this way because I know a lot of folks do enjoy to find out what the riser and the you know the eight pin connector power is it helps if you're planning your farm out you know what the load on the riser and your power setup is actually pretty vital to know that kind of information so stay tuned make sure you're liking and subscribing we're still trying to hit that hundred thousand uh, help us out thanks again guys and we'll catch you on the next one